Aloha, it's Robert Stelic with Blue Planet. I hope you liked that new introduction video at the beginning. And this is the second episode of the Blue Planet show. I'm just recording it here in my home office in the garage. So I'm trying to slowly improve the quality of the show. I just got a new microphone and a better webcam. And then also working on improving the Wi-Fi connection. So the quality of the video will hopefully be better in the future because I'm just using Zoom calls, recorded Zoom calls to do interviews with the wing foiling athletes and thought leaders all about the sport and it's just blowing up right now wing foiling or wing dinging whatever you want to call it and uh, hopefully this show will just like throw more fuel on the fire and, and just get everyone stoked on the sport. I'm super excited about it myself and it's really cool to learn things from athletes like Baltz Muller who is super inspirational just doing all these crazy moves and hearing him talk about uh, visualizing and dreaming about uh, new moves and, and, and then pulling them off. So he's really on the cutting edge and it's so cool to, to get him to on the show here. And at the end of the show, I asked him who to interview next and he suggested I should talk to a female and in particular, Annie Reichert from Maui. So I'm trying to get her on the show next. I messaged her. The best way to watch this show is on YouTube so you can follow the videos and the visuals along with what we're talking about. But these are really in-depth, long videos, so if you want to listen to it while you're driving or doing other things, it is now also available as a podcast on both Android and Apple devices. So if you go to Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, you can just search for The Blue Planet Show. It should come right up, and you can listen to it while you're driving or doing other things. And uh, the first episode with, with Zane Schweitzer is available on the podcast, and this new interview is going to be available in a couple days as well. Thank you so much for listening to the Blue Planet Show. Of course, make sure you subscribe to the Blue Planet Surf channel down below. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, without further ado, here is Baltz Miller. All right, Baltz Miller, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing today? Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for, for you, it's uh, eight o'clock in the morning, right? In in exactly. Switzerland. I'm on my coffee. <laughs> for me in Hawaii, it's uh, 9 p.m., so uh, we have like an 11-hour time difference, but I'm going to bed soon. You're just getting up, so what have you been up to? Uh, we just had an awesome weekend, and now I'm looking out the window, and it's not snowy, so it's a good day, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be windy as well. It's actually, it's be, it, it was windy the past weeks, and... Um, Combined with some very nice snow, it was a it's a dream to live in Switzerland at the moment. And I can I realize that the industry sort of realized now these days that we we need good wetsuits. And um, it's insane to see how this sport, how this water sport is growing insane. And there have been so many people on the water the past weekend. Yeah, some people they were even scared and they were telling me, oh. How, how, how this will end up in the summertime when now in the middle of the winter time there are already like 40 to 50 people on the water, you know. And um, yeah, so basically a lots of action on the water these past days. And, uh, and as you can see, also some action in the snow. So um, I can't I complain. Place, place. Only missing the waves. <laughs> or, or, or only really missing the waves. But uh, um. That's what I'm always telling, the waves we come precise with the wing and the foils because we really start sort of surfing the flat water with the wing and those foils, they, uh, they, with, those fo with those foils we pretend we're actually surfing waves. So what are you can trying to do here, um, now. <laughs> foiling in the that's snow? My, that's, my, that's my dream, to foil the snow. One of these next, one of these next days we got to sort of figure out how this gonna this gonna work <laughs> as you can see as you can see it didn't really work so far but all the friends were telling me it sh it's supposed to work you know because i mean the density of the snow is probably like 10 times thicker than water but if we would have a steep hill and lots of speed it would work everyone is laughing you know you everyone was so? laughing and they were all like you're choking and it's you're completely full you know but uh, i think it's possible and the reason why i 
tried it now. It was the past two seasons I was always talking to you. One day we got a snow foiler and everyone was like, you, you. Oh, I, I it was so frustrating. <laughs> well, it, it didn't it, work at all. Tell us a little bit about your background. Like, um, you're, I think you're 26 year old or how, how old are you? Exactly, I'm 20. I'm not sure if I'm 26 or I stopped counting, but I feel, I still <laughs> feel young. <laughs> I still feel young, even though in the morning a bit stiffer after a long day of sailing yesterday, winging yesterday. No, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm born and raised in Switzerland. It's not that common for uh, water sports. And I also did lots of snowboarding as a kid. Still love snowboarding. And um, um, I, I grew up in a family with two brothers and we we're all fully into water sports. So with the parents, we always traveled to the sea. And I think, I think that's the reason why we got into uh, winging, windsurfing, all those sort of sports. And my background is windsurfing. I'm still a professional windsurfer, even though I feel like I should uh, train more for windsurfing and I'm too much into winging lately. So, uh, I mean, my job is still professional freestyle windsurfer. It turns into professional winging, I think, as, as the industry is turning into winging as well, you know. So, yeah, that's it's basically my short story. Tell us a little bit about the, um, how you got into wing foiling. Like, how did you first get started up with it? It's now, I think, one and a half, some, some, summer, two, one and a half year ago. I was quite late. I saw the first guys already trying the first jumps and I was like, wow, we got to do this. And I've, I'm into, um, into foiling since the very beginning in windsurfing almost. So it's been, it's been uh, almost six or five years I'm foiling with the windsurf gear. And um, this, I mean, this feeling of foiling, it, it changed my life. I, Always when I'm back on the normal fin board, I feel like it's ridiculous, ridiculous straight. And I mean, it's not that loose and free and the foils, they, they changed my life. It feels like riding on a cloud. That's what the very first beginning, the guys were telling, oh, it's like cloud surfing, you're flying. And this, this loose three dimensional feeling, it's, it's, it's just insane. So um, the change from the, wind foil with the sail to the wing was not that crazy but uh, in reality the fact that you're not connected to your board anymore with wing surfing it it blew my mind from the very beginning so like the first day on the the first day on the wing i already tried i don't know like 360s and everything like spinning around i had no strap on the board on the very first day and the board was like 140 liters, so a very good beginning. The second day, I, I took the board with the straps and I tried straight to 360 in the air. So um, yeah, it, it it took off. It took off instantly, and um, and from that day on, I couldn't sleep anymore without dreaming about winging and wing tricks and flips and any sort of rotation. So. It, it took off it took off like this it, it yeah, shooted I mean, through the roof it's pretty amazing the the stuff you've been doing so thank you who, who's your partner here that you're winging with yeah i'm actually living together with my girlfriend eva so um together we're mostly always motivated some some someone of us is always motivated to get on the water like yesterday eva was even more motivated than me because the wind it seemed to be nothing and then we we run down to the beach in the wetsuits and it was i mean it's like five degree and the water is even colder oh. so we ended up at the beach there was almost no wind no white caps and we were like both pushing each other so there's a great community with my girlfriend of of course with uh roham i think roham michael is a very close friend and we're daily pushing what's possible on the foil but it all started together with my brothers they um they also jumped on to the first we were freestyle windsurfing together then we jumped on to the wind foiling uh freestyle 
stunts and we started to push each other like the level one guy was trying a trick on his foil the other guy tried a trick on his foil and I think that's how it started we were like pushing each other to get to get insane and the funny thing is now my brothers they're not into wing foiling yet <laughs> and that's the that's the craziest thing because they're still like I mean they're still like oh I want to keep stick. I want to stick to windsurfing because otherwise I would stop it. They're, they, I mean, I think they know what's happening. What happened with me? So yeah. they're a bit scared that they, 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 they. Now they got like one brother got a got a child, so he's his time is limited on the water. So he's more focused on on freestyle windsurfing at the moment. But I'm pretty sure next summer they 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 won't resist. They can't resist anymore. I mean. Yeah. When you see how many people are now winging, yesterday it was a, a, a random winter day, freaking cold, and I saw so many wingers on the water. It's um, it's it's so cool. I'm actually so, almost a bit scary. Yeah, I mean here here in Hawaii, we, I've noticed that there's almost more people more people winging than windsurfing now here yeah, I, on Oahu. Anyways. I believe. Yeah, and it's also well, much more diverse. It's like it's surfers, it's um, you know stand-up foilers, stand-up paddlers, um, windsurfers, kiters. Everybody wants to try it, so it's it's has a very broad appeal. It seems like, and as well, quite a big community of newcomers with no or actually almost no water sport background, which for me is like I still remember two years ago everyone was super like against winging they were like oh one and another water sport it's gonna kill it's gonna kill our community we anyway that's small and there are not enough people involved this will this will ruin it you know and then already last summer i could realize that there were so many new faces at the beach and now the windsurfers which were fully against it they're still like oh now there's so many people on the water but slowly and slowly and surely they all start winging and they, from the first session, you have a big smile. I mean, for the first moment you're flying, it's, it's changing your life. It's like the best powder free ride snowboard day or like the greatest surf day. That's, that's what I feel. So th this is some footage here from, is this in Brazil when you were at that World Cup? Um, I can't, I, Can you tell us about your trip Brazil. to Brazil and, and what you did over there? So um, Brazil, it was very unsure if, if it's going to happen or not. But we were invited for the for the first wing wing foil world world championship. I mean, it was the second one. There was a first one in Silva Plana, but it was not yet like officially. So we we got invited to Fortaleza in Brazil, and it's a it's a city spot in the middle of of this huge city. And the conditions usually are not that great, but they're awesome for winging. So um, it's it's funny it's funny to see how you how you can actually travel travel around the whole globe, get to a spot where the conditions are not awesome, and then having such a blast winging with the world class best uh, best riders, um, and that's what actually happened. Yeah, as you can see now, there's Fortaleza, Fortaleza Beach. Yeah, we we were living the dream in the middle of this pandemic. I mean, beside beside, we took a COVID test almost every day and had to get to strict um, strict borders to enter the water. It was so much fun on the water, and yeah. it was. How was it traveling? Like, was was it difficult to get there? And and. Um, and it was it was good to show a first sign of what could be possible in in this new sport, especially with Misa, the Brazilian, who's surfing so nice, and also Tituan, who who makes us dream in really like small or flat waves. They're riding it and they're making it look so good. It um yeah. it took off there, but. Where it really took off was the week after the competition when we all went to Cherry Coquara and we were like, everyone was a bit stressed out because for the competition, it was weird. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what the judge gonna, 
going to reward or not. So they were, um, they were definitely what they wanted to see were tricks in the waves. They wanted to see us riding the waves and doing tricks in the waves. But the waves were so hard that we almost couldn't get into, uh, into the waves because it was basically only a shore break. So we were riding the shore break and um, that was very scary. I saw some wipeouts, so I was going to play that. Um, let me see yeah. if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, they're back in Brazil, but there's so much, co lately there's so much content, there's so much riding. This is, in this pretty is much a every, wipeout in the shore break. Yeah, yeah. There's the wash. Yeah. yeah, together with Rohan. So um, it was the first official competition and uh, we pushed hard. I mean, <laughs> I would say the more than five guys got completely pounded in the short break because we just wanted to ride the wave and there was no wave. So uh, we ended up being washed up the beach. And as I said before, in the end, it was good. We all came together and then we, we tripped further to Cherry Quaquara up in the north. And that was such a, that was such a nice trip because there was the, of, of course, there was the F1 photo shooting. So they've been all invited. And we were uh, scoring some awesome waves together and um, pushing pushing the limits forward, foiling yeah. weavers. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like a lot of your inspiration for the for the move that you're trying is from freestyle windsurfing, right? Like you're trying the same moves and then, but it's actually it's, it looks like it's almost easier to do without the wing being attached to your board, right? It, it is definitely and there are much more possibilities and the craziest thing is that it's actually easier to get into it in windsurfing till you get to a certain level you jump with your board i don't know it takes you maybe two or three years and in winging i would say after two months you you're able to do your first tricks and um if you look at the numbers of riders doing tricks on the water, there's very limited freestylers out there. Maybe, I mean, the, the World Tour is like the prime 40 people in the world freestyling. And it, it got so complicated with all those weird double tricks in the air that no one could follow anymore. And I was already now, after just like one, one season of freestyling, I would tell that there are more wing freestylers than windsurf freestylers. Because it's, <laughs> it's simply, I mean, the, the, the youth is growing now not anymore into windsurf freestyling. They're starting straight with wing freestyling as it's something new. And it's combining the kite freestylers and the windsurf freestylers. So they're already double as much riders involved. And um, the cool thing is how it's combining the styles of the surfers, the freestylers, I mean, the kite freestylers. As, uh, as Maxim Sablo, for example, he's, he's one of the world's best freestyle kiters. And um, he's, um, he's putting his moves onto the wing now, his kite moves. And it's combining all the, the disciplines, like kiting, surfing, windsurfing. Ah, it's good to see. Yeah. And as you said, it's with the right gear, it's it's accessible for everyone and the right the right start. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit getting started. Can you give like what kind of pointers do you give to people that are getting into the sport? Like what would you recommend in terms of equipment and technique and exactly. all that kind of stuff? I think the most important is that you you better you're better not looking for a board to buy for your first session. Maybe the best is even to make like three or four lessons on basic beginner gear. As you can see this board there, I was using is a 60 liter board. I would say it's the advanced board for a really good rider, but for getting into it, you need a, you need a big board. You need something with like 140, 160 liters. So you're floating on your first day. And then on the second day, you can almost go down 40 or 40 or 50 liter going down on a 100 liter board. And then, I don't know, after one week of riding, you probably will find your 80 liter board as your prime board for a gusty light wind conditions. And some of, some of them probably after one month will ride a 40 liter board. So 
if, if I could give any advice is if you want to get straight into winging something new and you haven't any water sport or foil sport background, it's easier to learn wing foiling than any other foil sport, I would say, but with the right gear. And the best would be probably to rent some big gear or get yourself a, a beginner lesson and then buy yourself a medium volume board you can progress on. And don't, don't think too extreme, not plan to do any flips in your first two months, but plan to, to get all those uh, free riding tricks, which is so nice. You, you don't need to think about the jumping. For me, I was, I was almost one year, I was riding a 108 liter board, so quite a big board, but I was um, mastering all the tacks, the chives, and this gets unlimited. I mean, you can, you can keep on, keep on try, trying and training your, um, your tricks. Yeah. And, uh, and then this basically this never gets boring. Foil, right? It's like a 2000 square centimeter foil. Um, yeah. what, what kind of, what size foils do you use now mostly like for your freestyle and wave riding and things like that? Yeah, I think it's what I'm using these days is like a, a three foil setup, like three wings. So I still love to use the 2100 foil, which is the beginner foil, but it's also my light wind foil. So in conditions like yesterday with eight knots, I used the 2100. In conditions like the day before where we had like 40 knots, I'm using an 800 wing. So uh, much, much smaller. And for me, what I figured out with like a 1500 wing, 1700 wing, I can, pretty much composite all conditions so but it's a difference between the steady winds in hawaii or the gusty swiss conditions that's that's what i realized i mean in switzerland when we when we have conditions between five to 50 knots it's a good day mm -hmm. and and the wind holes they're so crazy there is no no wind at all you you drop down even on your big wings so mm -hmm. I realized we're using quite big wings compared to to ocean spots where the wind is steady and nice. But um, I still I still recommend if you get into winging to use a big foil for your first sessions because it's just way more fun and it's for sure. what much much easier. You can also fly it at lower speeds and take off earlier and all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, definitely for beginners, it's much nicer to have a bigger foil. Um, exactly. But yeah, in Hawaii, I mean, here on Oahu, we don't really have super strong wind either. We're not like Maui. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but if you're riding waves, I just find this smaller foil is so much nicer on a wave because you don't get overpowered as easily by the foil. You don't, it doesn't reach as True. As, I mean, True. Speed. And as well, as well, I, I realized riding waves on a big foil, you're constantly pushing yourself down in a bad position. And you're not really using the wave you're trying to escape the wave so when, when it comes to surfing you need you need a, a high performance surf foil who actually doesn't give too much yeah. but that's i mean that's it's another sort of it's another discipline even i would say right it's still it's still winging but it's it's a, it's a good point i'm wondering in which direction it will turn if it will be as it is now, like all in one, a bit of, of racing, a bit of surfing, a bit of freestyling, or if it will turn ridiculously into racing as it, as it did in any other water sports. Right. I hope not. So uh, if you could design your own contest, like what, how would you, um, what, what's like a perfect competition to you? Like what, what if you could um, say, this is how I want the contest to be, what would you do? I would, I would do a surf freestyle race competition all in one. Like <laughs> the, yeah, but it's like the, it's like the old school windsurf competition where they had to get racing through the shore break and doing tricks in between. This would be, this would, this would show the ultimate waterman. And I would even change the gear. Like you need to, you need to control any and every gear, like a waterman's league. So. Uh -huh. That, that would be my ultimate competition if, if it would exist. I mean, it's, it already exists, but 
So, so well, it's, yeah, we're, you we're get points for um, tricks, and but you also have to go as fast as you can. <laughs> like to yeah. race. And surf the waves as well. Okay. We had we had a race in in Tarifa at the second World Cup. We had a race. It was called the surf surf race. There was a two upwind laps and then a downwind lap where we had to surf. Like you can see now in the back, or we put the wing behind us and we were surfing down. It was hundred meters surfing down with the waves, and we were not allowed to lift up the wing as long as the board would touch the water and we would be on zero speed anymore. Oh, wow. So. So we had to go upwind, full speed with a, quite a big foil, and then we had to surf down the the chop, and the feeling was nice. I mean, except some of the guys took very fast equipment, and they were much faster upwind than the other guys, and then they had to struggle on the downwind. But it was, it was a cool format. Yeah. And it it needs to keep. We need to keep the fun in it. Otherwise, it will be America's Cup. <laughs> and only only polished high performance foil will will have any or uh, any chance. So we will see. It's, but it's rather keep it simple like, and accessible. You don't need a leash, right? You don't have a leash on your wing or on your board. <laughs> it's uh that was a that was a, a stupid stunt in a, in a very safe lagoon where the wing would just blow up the shore. And uh, everything would have been safe, but it's very dangerous. And I wouldn't recommend anybody to get uh, out on the water without, at least without the wing leash. And if the conditions are uh, freezing cold, like they do here, if you if you lose your board, you you're also screwed up. So yeah. it's it's much it's much safer to use a leash. But also the question like like any or every every question in uh in winging at the moment it's hard to say what's perfect it's hard to say where we need it i mean their wrist wrist leash i used my wrist i mean i i use the wing leash now around my belly so i have both my hands free that's how i do it but it's it's and like this you can even swim i mean for a short second you can swim normal with both hands so um but then if if your board leash and your wing leash gets get screwed together it's also it's also pain yeah it's hard to say i would i would anyway these days i would say nothing anymore because in probably in two, three months we look like we looked like idiots if if we if we did it that way i won't I, even personally i wonder how the wings going to look like in three months right so uh, is there any kind of, new do you have any new developments that you're working on in, in like wing design or board or foil designs that like stuff you're experimenting with new prototypes or anything like that? We, I mean, last night I almost couldn't sleep. I was always like, my, my brain is spinning and thinking and there's definitely a few, a few new, new progress. I, I'm not sure if it's a progress. All the time we try something, it feels like try and error, and you're not really sure if it's if it's a benefit or not. And at the moment as well in Switzerland, it's very hard to to get new products with the pandemic crisis. So it takes us almost sometimes it takes us three months from from the moment we had an idea till we get the first try, and then it ends up being uh, very frustrating, and you you realize that you're not. You're, you're stepping you're stepping back sometimes almost mm -hmm. so the moment it's it's not that easy but um a goal or a wish for me would be for freestyle i'm talking for freestyle winging would be a boom because i still still prefer the boom compared to the handles for freestyling mm -hmm. but there's so much benefits and also i mean a boom is again it's more it's more weight it's not that simple anymore so um it's hard to say. At the moment with NCs, we have a very cool and easy product where, where we can do freestyle tricks with it, surfing waves, or even just beginning winging. So um, it's not bad what we got now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. But yeah, I agree but, with the boom. I, I really like having a boom or, or like a stiff handle, you know, it makes it much easier to control the the wing and grab it anywhere you want yeah. without looking, you know? 
and you can use your wrist, you know, and you, the small movements. I realized, I realized a lot. We have such performance wings, but if you, if you twist your, your, your hands, nothing moves on the wing. He just stays in one place. Right. So then, then I'm asking myself, why are we using such high performance wings if we, if we, if we don't even can do the fine tuning, the fine adjusting by the, by your hands? I mean, in windsurfing and kite surfing, it's the smallest wrist change can can make a huge difference. So mm. I'm sure there will be lots of development in this direction, just to just to to progress the sport. We will see, <laughs> but uh, everything is still. It feels like everything is just at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, really, it's only been around for about two years, um, commercially available, where you could buy a wing. You know, it hasn't been that long, really. Um, True. So, what about your boards? I noticed, like, um, the, your MD boards, they have, like, those parabolic rails, kind of, um, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit curved. Negative snowboard rails. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what does that do? Like, how, what, what is the thinking behind that shape? So, um, it, it, for sure, it comes from snowboarding. The, the designer, Benoit, he's, he, he used to be a very, very good snowboarder. And what he wanted to, to get into the water sport were those uh, carving abilities of a negative rails. And for sure, the negative rails, they, they need a certain flex to work. But um, we, it's, we're not able to make flexible snowboard style surfboards at the moment. So um, still, we from the very beginning, what's so cool about this project, this Ambi project, it's from the very beginning we, we tried outside, we, did, we thought outside the box and we tried something else. And from, from lots of common and very famous shapers, I know they're very traditional. They're, they don't really think outside the box. They don't, wanna, they don't even want to try something that feels unnatural. Mm -hmm. So the coolest thing about this, uh, this Ambi project was just we... We try, we try and we fail and we, we realize stuff. And what I realized with the negative rails, one of the biggest benefits, now we're talking about uh, just foiling, as the tail is quite big, you can fully stand into, into your straps before you get going. So the, the volume is very, very compact below your body and you, you got a super good balance. So that makes it easy, easy for the takeoff before you're flying. And as well, the negative rails, they keep, they keep you more straight going forward on slower speeds. Mm -hmm. So you, it feels like you're taking off earlier with the negative rails. And um, of course, when, we, when, we, when we're using the boards without the foil, you can feel the carve. There's a, there's a, a certain different carve to it. Mm -hmm. you, you, you almost, it feels like you're gaining speed through the carve. So uh, it's a very cool project and it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I, like, I like trying new stuff and, and um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it, it works out it, it, or everything comes together. And with those Ambi boards, the, the greatest thing about Ambi is that Benoit as a shaper is not telling me, oh, you're crazy, this won't work. He's just like, oh, let's try it and, and see where it goes and where it brings us. And it even brings us into big storms, you know. That's the, oh, this, <laughs> this, this, this clip. <laughs> yeah, this, actually, on Saturday, we were expecting a storm like this as well. And then it just didn't happen. It was, um, it was flying water at, at certain points, but it was between zero knots to 50 knots and um and it was almost un it was unsailable unwindsurfable but with the wing we had quite a lot of fun it was just super gusty so you would but, say in super strong winds it's actually easier to wing foil than to windsurf for you if it's gusty yes because hmm. with the with the gusty yeah, with the with the gusty with the gusty winds, the problem is if you get a gust in your sail, the the forward movement is 
is not really is not really happening it's just blowing into your sail and you feel a lot of power in your sail but you're not going anywhere and with the wing as the wing you you're always able to stabilize the wing and put it in neutral so mm -hmm. you can release much more wind so uh, very strong gusts are um, are much smoother ridden with the wing that's true right yeah, I mean, it's it's so cool too that you're still involved in all the different sports like windsurfing, wing foiling, and, and kind of that crossover. It's pretty, yeah. pretty impressive. I think I even today I want to I, I want to go kiting today. You, so that I mean, that's the cool thing. You're trying any and everything. Right. You just you just do what you feel like and then get out on the water. So um, um, I see you're always wearing a helmet. Have you had some really bad experiences? Have you had some bad um, white box where you hit your head? Uh, yeah, I used to. I used to have very bad windsurf wipeouts, but I'm wearing this helmet already since I think 14 years. It's still the same helmet. Oh, wow. When I, I mean, my dad when I was yeah, my dad he bought me that helmet when I got into doing the first freestyle windsurf tricks. And I'm still wearing the same helmet, just to f I took I took out of a layer of foam, so now it fits again perfect. But at, uh, I mean, in the past in the past years, I had so many gnarly crashes. And when you look at this helmet, it probably wouldn't be a it wouldn't it wouldn't be a certif certified uh, safety product anymore. It's full of scratches and cracks. <laughs> but I, I I even with the helmet, I knocked out in the water. So. It's definitely, it's definitely a, a good relationship to that helmet. Yeah, and probably, I, I, I probably would oh, miss. Great. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's the, the crazy thing. The crazy thing about water sport is if you if something happens on the water surface, and and you're you're lying knocked out in the water, you you, you probably won't surf anymore any other day. You probably will be gone. So. You always need to you always need to keep in mind that you're playing playing on a dangerous surface, but that's also nice. The surface it's it's a big playground where you can do whatever you want. So, but I'd rather be safe than sorry and then missing out on on any or many good sessions to come. Yeah. That's why I'm comfortable with my helmet. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's your lucky helmet. And it's your... Now. <laughs> But now I, I also need to find a, 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 a good safety vest because I think with those flips. A good impact vest is really important, I think. During these days, it's getting a bit scary. And the foils, they're so sharp. So I'm not that, I'm not that sure in which direction we'll go. Maybe the foils needs to get a bit softer, even soft edges or something. Because mm -hmm. I think it's, you don't want to stab yourself on your, uh, on your winglets. It's yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah pretty sharp, yeah. Yeah. So, but I see the industry now producing lots of safety equipment as well, mm -hmm. which is which is definitely good. Yeah. Yeah. So talk a little bit about your training and um, also like visualization. Like you said, like you dream about it and stuff like that. But like when you learn a new trick, like what's the process? Like, I don't know, when you learn how to do a backflip or something, kind of walk us mm -hmm. through how you, the whole process. As you said, for sure, you, you need to dream about your tricks. And I'm always telling you need to be able to close your eyes and visualize your body movement from like 360 degrees. So if you're not able to visualize in which position you're going to pull yourself or throw yourself, I'm pretty sure you will go half rotation up and then drop down straight and nothing happens. So you before you're trying it, you can always say try and error but if you try and error you you're only going to hurt yourself it's much it's much smarter to try um to try to visualize your movements and maybe try them before you get on the water on the beach on a trampoline and um i even took the wing on my tr on the trampoline and i was doing flips i i didn't put too much pressure in the wing so i was trying the flips on the trampoline with wow. the with the wing in my hands, and I ended up landing on top of the wing on the trampoline, almost shoot out the trampoline. Mm -hmm. But um, it's 
it's safer it's safer to to be able to do the body movements before you get onto the foil and then destroy yourself because it's it's different and awkward with the foil to do a flip but um but Def definitely the most important is to dream about the, the, the trick, dream about the rotation. And, um, and maybe even before you get on the water, close your eyes one more time and then get out and try it the way, the way it feels safe and the way it feels natural. And um, for sure, for me, it's this, as you can see, this flip here, it's, a, it's from the windsurf background. It's almost the same movement or the same move as in, in windsurfing. So that definitely helps if you're already um, if you're already at a certain level in windsurfing or kite surfing. But but still it's for me it's um it's exploding my mind what's still to come. Yeah. Because it's so what, it's unlimited. It's kind of like a combination of a back loop and a push loop and kind of but you don't never really get backwinded up in the move, right? You just kind of spin exactly. really, really quick. Yeah. But still, I see I see people already trying some back backwinded air rotations. Yeah. I mean, also uh, also by mistake, I had some backwind pushes, and as you said, it's increasing the speed enormous. But um, it's probably also the way how we're gonna do double spins or something as we're doing it in windsurfing now these days with uh, almost seven, 720 rotations in the air. So yeah. there's still lots to come. Yeah. And again, I, I, I'm really thankful these days that uh, the wetsuit industry realized that surfing is not only happening in Hawaii. So um, now these days I feel comfortable warm with the, very, with, uh, with, uh, with the good suits we're having. Because it's not only board shorts riding, sadly, for me at the moment. But still, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So what, what kind just, of what suit do you use when it's like freezing cold outside? <laughs> yeah, now these, these days I'm using the, the, the O'Neill suits. And I'm mostly I'm even, even warm in a 4-3. But what I'm always telling everyone is it's, it's useful to make like an onion layer. So you have like a, a, a thin lycra below and it gives you an extra, an extra layer and that, that keeps you warm and isolates yourself. And the problem are only the hands. It's on, on the body, you, you won't feel cold anymore these days with the suits. It's just the hands and the, he the head and the feet. But can you but, use uh, gloves and, and a hat and stuff? Exactly. I'm, I'm wearing a very thick hat like almost a five millimeter hat. But the problem, the problem with those thick hats, it, 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 closes, your, it closes your vision, it closes your uh, orientation. And you, you feel like you're, um, yeah, you feel like you're in a, in a bag or something and you, you, can't, you can't really function. So that's the problem. But it also gives you a bit of safety. It feels like you're undestroyable as you protect it. Them. Can, yeah. can you explain what you do here? Like you, you, you kind of switch the wing before the rotation when you're still on the water and you're already starting to spin with the wing, man. Exactly. And uh, on this movement, I mean, it's, it's the main part of this trick is happening before the takeoff. As you said before, when I'm pulling the wing backwards, I put so much tension on my body. And as, as the wing is pulling me reverse and the board is still shooting forward, it, it generates such a fast rotation. And it's, um, it's very similar to the takeoffs in snowboarding when they're going over a big kicker. They throw themselves before they're actually in the air into the rotation and they, um, they generate those weird cork rotations, they're called. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's, it's happening now also in winging. It's so amazing. And, uh, it just blows me yeah. away watching this that you I mean, but I guess that is that something that also kind of that you kind of learned from windsurfing freestyling, or is this something new? This is something. This is something new. But it's um, the the way I started doing it. I was thinking about um, I was thinking about the windsurf tricks, and with the freestyle windsurf tricks, we're ducking the sails, or we're putting the sail backwinded, and we load it up 
in a in an awkward position. And as it gets loaded up in this awkward position, it wants to get back to neutral again. And as it twists this back, it generates this rotation. So um, there's definitely much more to come in this direction also in ringing. I mean, this is toe side, jumped out of toe side. Now we're also jumping it already regular stance. And um, um, this is a backwards rotation, but I'm also sure it's possible with a forward rotation. So there's still much more to come. And when we get through this clip here, at, the, at one point a bit later, there will be a double pop move. And um, it, it should, it's supposed to come soon. And I think those back-to-back -back jumps are gonna be gonna be something for the future as well. This one here, I mean, this one is just a regular move. And now this one. So there's the first rotation, landing, and straight to second pop. Yeah. And, um, and on the other one, I even think like- land backwards and you, you ride the foil backwards. That's, that's yeah, it. exactly, exactly. But what I think, what's definitely also possible is like this here, the back loop and then landing perfect on the wing and taking off straight again, like the air chair, the air chair man's yeah. sitting on their foils and they're doing like one flip landing, another flip landing, another flip landing. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm curious. And maybe the foil industry will even turn into some, maybe we will get some monofoils. So only one wing and then we could go probably better both ways like twin tip kiting it's already existing twin tip foiling yeah. where uh, where foils actually can go both ways oh wow it's definitely not the, but you you got to look it up it's a uh, twin tip foiling so yeah. they're like yeah. two same similar wings and they can go both ways um i'm excited it's a, it's, it's a what a time to be alive <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That's so awesome. Very interesting stuff. Um, so, are you working on some new moves? Like, is there anything that that you're trying to do that nobody's done before? Um, in winging, there's uh, at the moment the latest trick is um, is the cheese roll. It's a it's a common windsurf move. One of the first rotations in windsurfing. It's existing maybe forty years already. And I'm, I'm, I'm stoked I'm able to do it in windsurfing now, almost with closed eyes. And uh, just the past weekend, I was trying some cheese rolls with the wing and the rotation felt awkward and weird, but I, I might need to rethink the takeoff and it's definitely possible. So um, that will be another- Rotating over the strut. Forward. Yeah, exactly. I was I was twisting my front hand and I was pulling the strut backwards and turning like sh throwing myself over the over the leading edge. Uh -huh. The problem was actually the takeoff as the the wing was turning the rotation, but the foil was still sort of behind me in the water. And then when it trooped over me, it just um, it just stopped the rotation mm. and nothing spinned. It just did like a a straight air with the foil above my head in a scorpion position. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, there's much more to come. Yeah. And, and at the moment, I'm just, I'm just waiting for warmer conditions because it's the forecast for next week. It's, it's all below zero, zero degrees. So it's, it's going to freeze the wings again. And, um, and I realized when, when the wing is frozen, everything is so stiff, you just don't feel like you want to try some new stuff. But, um, but so, still, it's just so much, so much fun being on the water and riding. Have you, have you damaged the wing because of the free, like, the, does it, is it break easier or crack or anything? Or the bladder breaks or something like that? No. Have you had any problems with the About the bladder, I'm not yet sure if it's definitely if you if you pump up a frozen wing, you, you got to be careful. But uh, what I realized with the window material, they um they they cracked quite easy with with uh, with cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. So that's also a main reason why why our first wings they had wing windows. Then we put them out of the out of the gam again the windows. Now we we get windows again on our wings because we need it for the safety. 
we don't need it for the performance, but we need it for the safety. And mm -hmm. and at the moment, yeah, I, with the windsurf sails, it's the same. This PE material, it just gets stiff when it's frozen. Mm -hmm. The the canopy material is 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 uh, more brave. It doesn't really it doesn't really hurt the cold, but. Uh, but the bladder, I'm not sure. And the other day when I was pumping up my frozen wing, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh no. So I, I was very careful. But so far, so yeah. good. So when, I guess, like between snowboarding, windsurfing, winging, kiting, you basically get on outside pretty much all the time. Do you ever do any other sports like cross training or, or other exercise? Okay. Yoga, I think the, the, yeah, yoga, yeah, I just wanted to say, that, as you said, with all these action sports, with lots of physical efforts, I, sh I, I really, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm getting back to bed, I'm done. And the main focus I really need to, you, you, I really need to look at is uh, staying flexible. Because it's, uh, as you know, winging gets into the shoulders, gets into the arms. You, you actually gain new muscles where you... <laughs> which you haven't experienced before and so important that you stay flexible because it's it's uh it's it's your uh it's your insurance for your old days i would say that's what yeah, my dad always tells me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm doing lots of yoga i'm doing lots of balance boarding on a on a roll on a on a skateboard i'm i really i really like this uh this sort of exams and it's it's I wouldn't say I'm into CrossFit or anything like this because I'm doing the CrossFit on the water. Mm -hmm. But beside that I really need to stay flexible and I'm, I'm doing yoga on a regular basis. It's oh, good. Good. Yeah. good for good for the soul and good for the body. <laughs> Great. Well, I think we went over most of the questions I had for you. Um I, what kind of, what do you think will happen with wing foiling in the future? Like, do you see it becoming very, a very big sport, like bigger than windsurfing, kite surfing, and all those sports? Or what do you think? It's not as easy as, as football, as a material. It's a, it's a lot of gear involved. So that doesn't really, that doesn't really put swinging in a, in a, in a benefit position compared to windsurfing and wing. But definitely, I see it lately. It attracts lots of people, and uh, it will be there. It will be there to stay, just as any other water sports. I'm curious to see if it makes the Olympics. It probably will take uh, 40 years or something to to uh, convince everyone that it's it's um, it's nice to look at, and definitely it is. And uh, the question of the sport will be. If it gets too crazy and too complicated, especially the freestyle part, and um, at the moment the way it is now, it's accessible for everyone, and that's that's why it's boosting up and it's exploding. And um, I hope it stays that way and it gets uh, many people into water sports and uh, puts a big smile on on our faces. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when, when people want to um, find out more about you, I guess, is the best place to look at your YouTube channel or your Instagram. Yeah. Like, if you want to find him on Instagram, it's Radiculo. <laughs> and, and then on your, your YouTube channel is um, just... Balls. Balt, Balt Miller. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, awesome. So what what else do you want to talk about? Any anything else you want to cover? Here you're wing foiling in the snow. That's a pretty good one too. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, um, yeah. What I what I hope is that um, that yeah, as you can see here with the freezing hands, it's um, it's it's insane to see how people go through that much pain to just get on the water and enjoy the sport. <laughs> And uh, just just yesterday, I was I was thinking we were all out of our minds. You know, there were like almost fifteen to twenty wingers on the water, and in the summertime, there only used to be like three or four people out. Mm -hmm. And it's just as winging recently hit our beaches, and um, yeah, it's so cool to be part of this new revolution. Let's say it's a revolution. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just I just hope it's. Uh, 
we're not going to have any future body damages with all that spinning and flipping around because it, <laughs> it looks a bit awkward there as I'm, as I'm trying all those weird tricks, those new tricks. But it uh, feels good being out there and um, I can't get enough of it. I want to get out again. Yeah. I'm already hyped and excited to get on the water in, in any minutes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, so, it's so cool to watch your, pro your progression too. Like I remember seeing some videos of you maybe a couple of years ago when you were trying some of these spins but just wiping out, wiping out, wiping out. And I was like, what is he trying to do? But then now you're pulling them off and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's so amazing to see that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, so who should I, who do you think I should interview next for this show? Who would you think? Good. It's it's a good question. I would I would tell what I'm really curious about is um the girls' side, especially the Hawaiian girls like Annie. I just saw her drawing a backflip yesterday. Who Annie did? Star, Annie Star. Oh, yeah, Annie. Okay. Exactly. And I saw her drawing a backflip, and I'm so curious if some of the girls will do backflip soon, wing backflip soon. And I think uh, there are a few girls up on the list. I mean, Olivia, Ami, and also Eva, my girlfriend, definitely. It's cool to see that also the girl side is pushing the, the wing sport. Mm -hmm. And um, even yesterday, there have been a few girls on the water and there was none, none of them was kiting or windsurfing. And there have been a few girls winging. So it's cool to see that it also gets the girls on the water. So yeah, for sure. No, yeah. that's, a, that's a really good, uh, good idea to get a girl on the show. I should do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. I mean, I mean, otherwise it gets another uh, dickhead sport, like, like all those kite, kite and windsurfing, we're actually suffering. We're suffering too many mans at the beach being like testosterone and <laughs> no, but it's good to see the change also in winning. It's um, many new faces on the water. Now that's a, a good hype. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So hope you have fun today. Get on the water and yeah. and post. Keep posting all those videos. It's great to watch. Thank you. And uh, I'm yeah. looking forward. I'm looking forward to uh, to visit Hawaii one of these days. Yeah, I hope. Still, it's still, it's still off my on my pocket list. Right, right. I haven't I haven't reached that far yet. Awesome. Well, hope, hopefully one of these days. That would be great to, oh. great to meet you here in Hawaii. Okay. Yeah. Would be awesome. <laughs> Looking forward to win with you guys. Yeah. With you. For sure. Cool. Awesome. Have a good great one. To meet you. Take care. Thank you a lot. Have a great day. Aloha. Yes. Ciao. All right. So that's it for the second episode of the Blue Planet Show. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel down below. Listen to the podcast. And I hope to see you next week for the third episode of the Blue Planet Show. Thank you again for watching. See you on the water. Aloha.